is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires, right on our strength, and by Grunt Style. Now, with all the news from NASCAR Touring, local and international series racing, here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Big money gets a big win in Oswego, and there's one West Coast super weight model standout looking to climb the NASCAR ladder. Hello and welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast for Wednesday, August 5th, 2018. Kyle Ricky here at the Stafford Motor Speedway in Stafford Springs, Connecticut, joined by Hannah Newhouse in our Concord, North Carolina studios of the Motor Racing Network. And Hannah, what do you think of the new, uh, the new backdrop behind me of one of NASCAR's oldest short tracks? I think it's appropriate because some of the first conversations I had with you and also preseason show, it was all talk about Stafford and Stafford this and Stafford that. And I was like, okay. Whatever, and then I finally got to go to Stafford, and now like you're bringing Stafford to the show, which is what's such a great short track. So, I approve anything anything with that white backdrop there, Kyle. When I'm not traveling with the Motor Racing Network crew on the week- race weekends, I'm here on Friday nights for some great competition just up the road from Killingly, Connecticut. So, uh, hopefully, we can do this more uh, on here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. There was racing over the weekend at short tracks across the country, including here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. We'll talk more about that later in the show. But down in your neck of the woods, pretty big event, uh, the Bobby Isaac Memorial at the Hickory Motor Speedway, one of the marquee events for late model competitors down in North Carolina. Yeah, there was. It's a big event that everyone looks forward to as late model drivers, like you said, down here in the Carolinas. Brought competitors from Virginia, including Philip Morris. You saw them down from, like, South Carolina, including um, Will Burns, made the trip up here. So definitely an event that drew a lot of race cars, and it was action-packed. I mean, from my understanding, lots of cautions. Ty Gibbs ended up in the tire barrier. There was a altercation on pit road, but it was Ryan Repko, who seemed to be quick all weekend, that found victory lane. So great for him. He's had an up-and-down two years almost in a late model now. So to win an event like the Bobby Isaac Memorial, hopefully kickstart some more success for him to end the year, maybe even go into 2019 held off Austin McDaniel to take the race win uh, on Saturday night at the Hickory Motor Speedway. Let's talk about who's on the show today, including an up-and-coming star uh, in the state of Washington. Uh, Brittany's Moore going to join us here on the show. She's been busy this year running for a championship at her local track of Evergreen Speedway and also just participated in a pretty cool combine with Toyota. Brittany really made a name for herself, I want to say, last year. She kind of came out of nowhere, I want to and really put a whooping on the boys up in the Northwest Super Light Model Tour. She won races. Um, she was a championship contender, won that championship. And that just was, like, out of nowhere. So then, obviously, drew the attention, like you said, of a pretty cool combine. A Toyota Racing Development hosted a combine recently at the Irwindale Speedway, the track that everyone jokes just won't go away. Thankfully, love that racetrack. <laughs> um, but they hosted that TRD combine down there, and Zamora was one of, I believe, nine participants that was down there, including a handful of girls and what a great opportunity to draw the eyes of TRD, who we've seen has a pipeline full of success. Brittany will join us here on the show in a little bit, but coming up uh, here shortly, Matt Hirschman, the most recent winner of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. They were in action this past weekend at the Oswego Speedway, part of a big weekend of racing there with Modifieds and the Isma Super Modifieds in the uh, Oswego Classic. It was Matt's first win in almost 10 years on the Modified Tour in a track that he knows well. Looks like another rough race, though, uh, for the Modifieds. I believe 11 caution flags slowed that event. They had three green-white checkered attempts, and if that doesn't, yep. like you say, put it into perspective of how rough that race was, I mean, you get that first overtime start, and you're like, okay, this is it, and then you get another one, let alone a third one, so um, cool. I mean, I, I would not want to be sitting on pole position with three green-white checkered attempts. That is just a nervous wreck right there, so cool to see Hirschman, like you said, back in victory lane after almost a decade. That's almost half my age, Hirschman. if you want to put that into perspective. <laughs> it is. It is about <laughs> half your age, sadly enough. Uh, Hirschman picked up the win. Justin Bonson, your second. Doug Kobe, third. Woody Pitcat, fourth. Eric Goodell rounding out the top five. Chase Dowling finished in the 12th spot. Uh, so that allows Bonson, your to pick up the championship lead and add to that by now some 73 points with four races to go. The Modifieds head to Riverhead Raceway on Long Island this coming weekend. But coming up after the break, we will talk to Oswego race winner, Matt Hirschman. He'll join us on the guest line when we come back. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go. 
Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Things happen fast in racing, and if you don't know where to look, you can miss it all. With Legend from Racing Electronics, you'll never miss another moment. Legend gives you live fan vision video, in-car cameras, and stats at NASCAR and other Premier Series events. And the next-generation race scanner for unfiltered driver and crew audio at any motorsports event nationwide. NASCAR fans have never been closer to the action. Welcome to the future of the fan experience. Learn more by visiting racingelectronics.com. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Here on NASCAR Coast to Coast on the Motor Racing Network, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour ran the Toyota Mod Classic 150 over the weekend at the Oswego Speedway in New York, part of that big weekend of racing there. The race winner, Matt Hirschman, had to survive all those yellows and those three green-white checkered flag finishes at the end. To secure the win, he joins us now on the guest line. Matt, we'll, we'll get with Matt here in a moment, but uh, one of the wildest races that we have seen in quite some time, uh, Hannah, for the NASCAR Wheel and Modifieds. Usually this year, the talk has been long green flag runs and something that uh, we did see at the start of the race at the Oswego Speedway. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the yellow flag, uh, once it flew once on lap 53, it flew 10 more times following that. There's always that joke, cautions breed cautions. And that is the truest statement ever. It seems like, especially later in a race, when you get closer to that checkered flag flying, everyone just gets so antsy. So, But it's cool to see that Hirschman was able to keep his cool. We mentioned that he has, I believe, like 24 starts in the past six years in the Modified Tour. And he went into the race clearly knowing how well of a season Justin Bonsignor has. And you've got all of these cautions, all of these restarts, laying it on the line. And you've got a guy that has been, I mean, almost unbeatable for most of the races. I mean on your tail for those last three restarts. So he was able to keep his cool, but yeah, cautions breed cautions. That's just a well-known fact anymore. And a driver that survived all those cautions to claim the win joins us now on the guest line, Matt Hirschman. Matt, welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. Congratulations on the win, your first in nearly 10 years on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. How'd it feel to get back to the victory lane? It was big for sure. Uh, getting that win for PD Motorsports uh, was really the main thing. Uh, uh, you know, we had it's been a while since I'd won a wheel and race, but we have I had won uh, a few races uh, in the past. Uh, but getting a win for this new team, uh, basically two years ago on the calendar, uh, is when we debuted this team, uh, and it was uh, completely from the ground up, uh, a complete operation uh, from nothing to. Uh, to, uh, you know, two years later to reach this milestone, uh, and we've won several races uh, outside of the tour over the past two years, and, and to add this is really, uh, you know, a, a crowning achievement for, for a new team, you know, starting up uh, and, and to where we've gotten in just a short amount of time. And we were talking before the break and also um, right before we had you on about it was a little bit of a hectic race, especially at the end of the race, Three overtime attempts. Green, white, checkered. Took the lap on one or took the lead on lap 120. But what's going through your head when you go for that green, white, checkered and find out you have to run three more of them essentially? Well, it. it I definitely wanted the race to end. We had cars, uh, you know, quite a while, and uh, and there were several of those. All those green, white, checkers were. It seemed that they were uh, red flag stoppages as well. So uh, so you're kind of sitting there. Uh, under red flag and uh, you know you, you just want to get that point you want to get the race over with especially when you're the leader uh, and you know that had the race continued to the checkered flag you, you would already had been over and you would have won um, but uh, you know it wasn't uh, really a big deal just uh, the last 10 laps of the race seemed like it took as long as the first 140 so um, like I said it was uh, nice to get it get it over but uh, it wasn't really a big deal you have run in other forms of modified racing at the Oswego Speedway in the past. Uh, obviously, I think your family has a long history there. How much do you think all of that past experience might have helped you on Saturday night? 
Well, it can never hurt. Uh, I don't know. Going into the race, I really didn't feel that I had an advantage there anymore because this is the third consecutive year that uh, the Wheel and Tour has been there on this particular weekend. And, you know, track experience is, is one thing, but series experience tends to be really more important uh, because you're working with the same tires every race, uh, the same procedures, uh, live pit stops, and all that stuff. That really is what's more important because, I mean, I've gone to many tracks for the first time, never even, never even laid eyes on them and won the first time out. So, you know, and, and the same could be said, you know, going back to the beginning of the year, the first race of the year at, at Myrtle Beach, John McKennedy had never raced there, never even seen the place and, and won the opener there. Um, so track experience can help you, but uh, I think series experience uh, and just really just having a good car, a good team, and, and hitting the setup on race day, that, that's really what's key. Um, but like I said, uh, uh, there's not too much I haven't seen at Oswego before, so uh, I'm certainly going to say you know it, it, it didn't hurt, but uh, it wasn't really the most important part. We mentioned a little bit earlier, I believe it's, 24 starts in the past six years on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Um, you've seen success in, like you said, many other ranks of modified racing, but what has prevented you from running that full modified tour since you haven't ran the full tour since, I believe, 2011? Yeah, I had done it consecutively back in the later 2000s. Uh, I know that we finished third in points in 2007, second in 2008, and uh, then I'd been away a little bit, came back and ran the 2011 season, and then really, again, I've uh, been away uh, a good portion uh, of the, the last uh, five, six years, as you said, uh, before this PD team came together. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, recent, I really look at the, our recent success and results. Uh, you know, going back to last year, uh, I think we're, we're looking at six straight races, I think, of qualifying either first or second. And... Uh, five straight finishes of third or better, uh, top threes in, in five straight races. Uh, so I'm really proud of uh, the you know the team and the way we're performing as a, a part time and a, a very part time team um, to to come out every race we've gone to at m multiple race tracks and uh, under different formats and we've qualified and finished uh, among the, the top three every time out. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been uh, recently we're performing well. Um, you know, I know that my results, uh, you know, at, at times in the past uh, were not uh, as, you know, as stellar as uh, some of the other stuff I had been doing. But uh, now that really got a good program going, got equi equipment uh, capable of competing with the rest of the field, then uh, the, the results speak for themselves. Uh, I haven't put myself in the possibly the best possible situation to succeed in the past uh and and right now uh i'm showing uh you know what what the results can be uh in that situation there are four races left on the nascar wheel and modified tour for this season uh riverhead this week uh, good new hampshire stafford and thompson over the course of the next six weeks will we see you at uh, any of the next four races on the nascar wheel and modified tour no, this was our, our final race plan. We actually had three races planned, which is what we did last year, and we added the Langley race uh, as, a, as a bonus, uh, an added race we put in there. Uh, Langley was a track I had never been to before, and I just liked the, the idea of going to a new venue, a place I'd never been to. Uh, I always like going to new racetracks, uh, getting to see you know different places and, and race on a different racetrack. So uh, we did add that one back in June, uh, but this this was our final planned race. Um, you know, we we are uh, with the PD team. Uh, you know, I've got a busy race schedule. I race just about every week, uh, and for the season, I'll probably run a little a uh, little over 30 races. Uh, but for the PD team, uh, we run a, a select schedule, and and that's what we can do for a season. And and in terms of uh, motor laps and and things like that. Uh, so we got a few more races in the fall to do with that group, but uh, we won't be at any of the remaining wheel and tour races.
right, Matt Hurstman wrapping up with him here, the most recent winner on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour at Oswego. First win in 10 years, and, and, and all three of your wins have come at three different New York tracks. Uh, not sure if, if that means anything to you or not, but uh, you've done well, certainly, in New York. Uh, congratulations again on the win. Thanks for joining us, and, and we look forward to seeing you down the road. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always good to come on and talk with you. All right, Matt Hurstman joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. From the East Coast of Modified Racing to the West Coast of Super Late Model Racing, we'll talk with one of the up-and-comers on the West Coast. And Brittany Zamora, she will join us after the break here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. After more than 1 million hours of development, the truck of the future has arrived. The new Cascadia from Freightliner, inspired by science, driven by passion. It's loaded with driver-focused improvements, such as noise abatement technologies for an even quieter ride, an innovative wraparound dashboard for improved comfort, and a reimagined driver's lounge that promotes productivity and relaxation. Experience the new Cascadia at your dealer or online at Freightliner.com. Hi, this is Mike Bagley. Join me and the rest of the MRA crew every Tuesday night for NASCAR Live. We'll put a bow on the weekend's action and get you ready for the upcoming race with the biggest names in the sport. As you look at that particular race, that's been one of our best races over the years, and I think every driver in the garage is looking forward to racing this particular package. Hear exclusive interviews, expert analysis, as well as stuff you won't hear anywhere else. Oh, yeah, good job, guys. Good job. It's NASCAR Live this Tuesday night at 7 Eastern on the Motor Racing Network. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Back here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, a show that not only chats with drivers from the NASCAR Touring Series, or the K&N, the Modifieds, and the International Series, but also with drivers from NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series tracks across the country that run every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, and one of those drivers joins us now on the guest line talking about Brittany Zamora, a series regular at the Evergreen Speedway in Monroe, Washington, the leader of one of the uh, Budweiser Crown series that they have up there right now for their super late model program. She's been busy the last couple of months. We'll talk more about uh, a, a lot of those extra things that she's been doing with Toyota here in a couple of moments, but Brittany, thanks for taking the time to join us on the guest line, and Congratulations on what seems like it's been a very successful 2018 season for you and your team. Yeah, thank you. It's been a great season. Um, we're about to wrap up everything here in about a month and a half, but um, it's the busiest part of the season that we've experienced, so we got a lot going on. Something funny, too, that I always joke, the West Coast and the Northwest, our, our race season is much shorter than everyone out here. We get cold and rain real quick in the Northwest, and Brittany knows that. But, Brittany, for people who may not know, give us a little bit of your background. We know, like Kyle mentioned before, you're running super late models up in the Northwest, touring as well as running for that Evergreen Championship. But what's your racing background? Where do you come from? Yeah, so my dad actually started racing, and he got me into it. So I'm a second-gen driver. Um, I began go-karts at the age of five. I did those for about um, eight years, and I got into stock cars. I did mini stocks, outlaw compacts. I toured all around the Northwest with those. Um, I had multiple wins. And in 2016, I began my career in super late models, and I've been doing that for three years now. And it's been a, a pretty successful career. I believe, what, the 2017 a uh, Northwest Super Late Model champion uh, up there in the northeast part of the country, and you're you're running for another championship here this weekend at Evergreen. Got to be happy with not only how quick your career has progressed, but what you've been able to accomplish in in relatively uh, short amount of time, especially in the Super Late Model division. Yeah, it's been great for us these past few years, but we're always looking to um, back up what we've done and to keep getting better and add more to. Um, my resume. So we won the championship last year in 2017 for the Northwest Super Late Model Series. And this weekend, I have the opportunity to take on the championship in the Budweiser Crown Series at Evergreen Speedway. But it's also a companion race with the Northwest Tour up here. So, and I'm currently leading that series. And so I have two races left there. So we have an opportunity to um, get two more championships this year. So that's what we're looking forward to. Definitely something cool to add to the resume. She was the first female to win that championship, as well as I believe you'd be the first female at Evergreen as well to win a championship in that super late model division, if I'm not 
mistaken, but we talk about family teams. You know, that's a big thing, especially in the Northwest. We don't really have the backing that a lot of the people out here on the East Coast do. Working alongside your dad, Mike Samora, who's got a lot of experience at a lot of these racetracks you go to, how did how, what's it like working with your dad as primarily, I mean, you know, one of your crew chiefs? It's fun, I tell you. I mean, a lot of people, um, they have a team that they hire to come to the track, but I bring the team with me. You know, we're working at the shop Monday, Friday, and then we're racing on Saturday. So it's cool to um, be able to work alongside with him at the shop, preparing the car, doing regular maintenance, doing setup with him, and also hearing him spotting me throughout the race. It's cool to have him by my side. Let's talk about the Toyota Combine uh, recently held at the Irwindale Speedway. Uh, you, along with uh, several young ladies from across the country, got to participate in this Combine last month at the Irwindale Speedway in California. How did you, you come about being able to be a part of this Combine with Toyota, and, and how do you feel it went? Yeah, so a couple weeks prior to the Combine, I didn't know it was happening, but I got asked to send in a resume and that, um, I would hear back from them later on, and I honestly kind of forgot about it. It took a couple weeks to hear anything back, and I got a call asking if I was able to make it to the Combine. So we flew down, um, took the opportunity. It was a great experience. I loved it. It's cool to get to work with a team and people who I don't get to see every day because I'm always with my family. So it was a cool experience getting to work with a team like that and then the combine went great um it was my first time at Irwindale Speedway and first time in those cars so it was a big learning experience and uh we had a couple of races one I won and then I made it into the champion four race and there was eight of us so they had you entered into that by the best average finishing position and we ended up second in the championship race that definitely for them the rest of the season so that was pretty exciting for us too definitely a cool situation that toyota put on they also had a lot of their coaches there as well as huddleston who owns the race cars part of a big hand in irwindale speedway coaching these drivers toyota had jack irving um on site as well talking to a lot of these drivers and giving them i mean health advice everything that a young driver could need so super cool opportunity for you like you said you've got three races you ran one this past weekend your first race with Toyota and that Huddleston team, and I believe it was a ninth place and a sixth place finish. You got another race at, is it Kern and then Vegas? What are you taking away from that first race that you ran with? I mean, essentially this TRD program. Yeah, it's it'll be helpful heading into Kern and um, having experience with this team because I've never worked with them before. So it's trying to get to know everybody. <laughs> get used to my spotter um, and get used to the drivers that I'm going to be racing as well. And to begin the racing and heading to Kern, I feel really good about it. I've never been to the track, but it looks fun and fast. It's more my style. So I'm excited for that. But um, the team's great to work with, so I'm excited for what's ahead of us. A lot going on in the uh, life of Brittany Zamora here lately, running for two championships at uh, Evergreen or at Evergreen this weekend. And then you have the Toyota events coming up, like Hannah mentioned, to Kern later this month. Ultimately, looking at the big picture, you're still young, but you're climbing the ladder quick. What's the ultimate goal for you here, say, in the next five or six years? Um, the goal is just to take racing as far as I can. Um, we're currently a family-run team, so our racing budget can only take us so much. So we're kind of um, at the highest level right now with the touring and the full series for the super late model. So I'm hoping to get an opportunity to like the one I'm in right now with uh, Toyota Racing and just taking my racing to the next level. That's my goal. Toyota Racing definitely hands-on with a lot of teams. You see them involved in teams such as Bill McAnally Racing on the West Coast with the Canaan West as well as some of the Canaan East teams and obviously all the way up through the Cup Series. So definitely great people to have in your corner, no doubt. Um, your season, do you have any plans for 2019? I know you were part of the uh, Kulicki Driver Development Program this past year, which actually restrained you from running in those touring divisions like the Canaan Pro Series West. Um, but have you got anything in the works for 2019 yet? You know, the plans for next year is uncertain right now. Um I applied for the Drive for Diversity Combine, so we're going to see how that goes in October and see if I get accepted to it. Um, if that goes well, that'll be the plan, but um, 
If not, we'll probably continue uh, super late model racing and then hoping to get in some K&N next year. That'd be great. Of course, that drive for diversity combine uh, put on by Rev Racing uh, and an opportunity to potentially get a ride in the NASCAR K&N Pro Series East or the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series here on the West Coast. Brittany, uh, thank you for taking the time to join us here today on NASCAR Coast to Coast from the, the West Coast. And best of luck to you this weekend at Evergreen. I know it's a big weekend for that entire facility out there as they are set to crown a bunch of champions, and you are looking to be one of them for the second consecutive year. Yeah, thank you for having me. Brittany Zamora joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, uh, one of those upstars that we'll be keeping an eye on here over the next several years. Coming up, we'll wrap up this edition of NASCAR Coast to Coast by reviewing some of the races held this past weekend at NASCAR short tracks across the country. Grunt style. The American fighting spirit is in everything we make. We are 500 patriots and veterans strong, bringing clothing manufacturing back to the United States of America. Always moving forward, never retreating, never giving up. We are Grunt style, and this will defend. Get yours at gruntstyle.com. The roar of motorcycles takes over Daytona International Speedway October 18th through the 21st with the return of Biketoberfest. Racing action features top riders from CCS and ASRA as they take on Daytona's challenging 3.5 mile road course. Enjoy free demo rides from top manufacturers, stroll through the area's largest motorcycle marketplace, and enjoy Saturday's Hot Leathers Fashion Show and Bikini Contest in Harley-Davidson Thunder Alley. Marketplace admission, demo rides, and parking are free. For race tickets, call 1-800-PITCH-UP or visit DaytonaInternationalSpeedway.com. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Wrapping up this edition of NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. It's that time of year where short tracks across the country are in the final couple of weeks of their 2018 season, or like Bowman Gray Stadium, have already crowned their champions. Just three events remain here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Keith Rocco won last week in the SK Modifieds. Ronnie Williams is the championship leader by 66 points with three races to go. Just talked to Brittany Zamora from Evergreen Speedway. One event left there. She's the championship leader in their Budweiser Crown Series, while Tyler Tanner has an 11-point lead in the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series Super for late model weekly series their final weekend this weekend and at the Kingsport Speedway it was Crest Van Dyke winning the season finale in Tennessee uh, this past Friday night part of their k and championship night Zeke Shell won the championship his first track title since the track became a NASCAR facility back in 2011 a lot more happening this weekend Hannah and several more of the NASCAR touring series back in action this weekend as well yeah, back in action and back-to-back -back weekends form the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Heads to Riverhead Raceway. Justin Bontignor, we've talked about, has such a big lead, but you're going to see people maybe try and make that last chance as we only have about four events left in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. So back in action at Riverhead. Also, the NASCAR Pinty Series after an off weekend from Canada or from the uh, road course up there. They're back at St. Astache this weekend. Tagliani looks to gain on that points lead on LP Dumoulin. Uh, we'll see if he can do that. Also, the NASCAR Canaan Pro Series West shakes things up next Thursday as they head dirt racing at the Las Vegas Bull Ring. So, something to keep an eye on. You're going to have drivers like Christopher Bell, who's going to make that dirt race. Uh, first time Canaan West has been on dirt, I think, ever, if not. if if not in quite some time. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see a lot of these drivers like Derek Krause, who has little to no dirt experience, go up, up against someone like Haley Deegan, who is the dirt princess. So maybe we'll see a breakthrough win on Deegan this upcoming week on the Las Vegas Bull Rings dirt track for the Canaan West. I, I, I cannot wait to get out there. It reminds me of the first time we went to the Eldora Speedway a couple of years ago for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. We had no idea what was going to happen. And it turned out to be a fantastic event. Look for the same next week. And like you mentioned, a lot of ringers coming in. They're expecting an entry list of about, what, 30, 40 cars that try to will try to compete next uh, Thursday night? Yeah, they have a pretty stacked entry list. But you also have to look at it, too. The Canaan and Pro Series West, a development, a feeder series for the upper division. Um, so you have to laugh at the idea of, you know, taking mostly 17, 18-year-old, 15, 16-year-old kids throwing them on a dirt track in a K&N car. So it's going to be a toss-up, but either way, I think it'll be a great race. 
Can't wait to get out there and see it next week. It'll kick off a busy weekend for NASCAR in Vegas. Hannah, look forward to it uh, next week. Have a great weekend out there in the short tracks of the Carolinas, and we'll do this again next Tuesday. Sounds good. See you then. All right. I want to thank all of the guests on today's show, including Matt Hirschman and Brittany Zadora. For Craig Moore and Brian Yesowich, our producers, she's Hannah Newhouse. I'm Kyle Ricky. We'll see you back here next week on NASCAR Coast to Coast. NASCAR Coast to Coast has been brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. NASCAR Coast to Coast can be found on demand at MRN.com, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and SoundCloud. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.